The short haul flight market in the world is worth hundreds of billions of dollars and is steadily growing year over year, with the exception of the pandemic years. Of course, some short haul flights are necessary, for example to the Aegean Islands in Greece or to remote settlements in the Arctic Circle. However, there is a huge amount of short haul flights which could be replaced with train service, given enough investment and political will. In this video, I'll try to make the case that a lot of short haul flights, especially in Europe, could be replaced with trains. Before the video starts, please consider subscribing. It's free and it helps out a ton. Thanks and on to the video. For the purposes of this video, I'll separate flights into three segments. The first is short haul flights, which are flights up to 1500 kilometers or 932 miles. These are flights like Amsterdam, Netherlands to London, England or New York to Washington, DC. The second is medium haul flights, which are flights from 1500 to 3000 kilometers or 932 to 1864 miles. Examples of medium haul flights are London, England to Athens, Greece or Chicago to Los Angeles. And the third is long haul flights, which are flights over 3000 kilometers or 1864 miles. These are flights like Frankfurt, Germany to Shanghai, China or Dubai, UAE to Sydney, Australia. There are also two main types of aircraft, turboprops and jet engine planes. Turboprop planes, like the ATR-72, have limited range and so they are usually used for short flights. The newest revision of the ATR-72 the ATR-72-600 has a maximum range of 1,370 km or 851 miles. The top cruising speed is 510 km or 317 miles per hour, meaning that this plane will exhaust its fuel capacity after a roughly 2.5 hour flight. In comparison, jet aircraft fly much faster up to 930 kilometers or 575 miles per hour. Their range goes from thousands of kilometers for jets like the Boeing 737 and Airbus A320 to almost 18,000 kilometers or 11,200 miles with jets like the Boeing 787 and Airbus A350. In this video, we'll focus on the short haul section of the aviation market. After all, replacing something like a New York to LA flight would require something like an overnight high-speed train which currently doesn't exist in the US, not to mention the huge cost of running such a line. Even lots of medium haul flights, like the aforementioned London to Athens, would take too long to cover and would pretty much only be feasible if a higher speed overnight rail connection was established. However, lots of short haul flights are in the metaphorical Goldilocks zone, where train travel could be a viable alternative. There's a few reasons behind why lots of short haul flights which could be replaced by trains, still exist. Because of lobbying by the airline industry and because billions in subsidies to airlines are awarded every year, flights are kept artificially cheaper than they should be. For example, aviation fuel is tax exempt in all EU nations, with the exception of domestic flights. In contrast, the lowest automobile fuel tax in the EU is 29 euro cents per liter or 1.21 dollars per gallon in Hungary and the highest is 79 euro cents per liter or 3.52 dollars per gallon in the Netherlands. However, there are other reasons as well. If you've ever booked a connecting flight, you've checked your bags in at the starting point and picked them up at your destination with no need to pick up your luggage at every stop. This type of arrangement is called a through ticket. Through tickets offer convenient travel as well as extensive rights if your flight gets delayed, if you're denied boarding or if your flight gets cancelled. Buying such tickets is a breeze. All it takes is going on a flight aggregator like Expedia or Skyscanner. In comparison, through tickets are way less widespread for rail passengers. Since the numerous rail operators in Europe don't usually publish their ticketing data, there can't be a universal train ticket aggregator like Skyscanner or Expedia for flights. Those that do exist are often patchy and don't cover every possible train ticket. Thankfully, the EU seems to be moving in the right direction. Hopefully, sometime in the future, we'll finally get something like Skyscanner for trains. Another reason behind why there are so many short haul flights is this. This is the map of the electrification standards of European railways. As you can see, 
it's an absolute clusterfuck. To run trains across these lines, the locomotives pulling the carriages have to feature special equipment to work across multiple electrification standards. However, there are numerous things that could be done, such as... First, as previously mentioned, train operators should release their ticketing data, so that booking international trains won't result in mental health issues. Second, for the sake of competition and the climate, subsidies to the airline industry should be reduced. Jet fuel could also be taxed, making it similar to other petroleum products. Proceeds from this tax could go to maintaining and building new rail infrastructure. Most importantly, in my opinion, high-speed rail and night trains need to be developed further, especially in the countries of the former Eastern Bloc, which almost completely lack high-speed rail. Loads of popular European flight routes, like Prague, Czech Republic to Amsterdam, Netherlands, or Warsaw, Poland to Budapest, Hungary, could have effective competition from trains given enough investment and political will. Thankfully, part of the Trans-European Transport Network Plan, or 10T for short, lays out the plan for the development of high-speed railways for the whole EU. Numerous high-speed rail lines are under construction and in the planning stage, including in my home country of Czech Republic. I just hope that I'll get to make a video on it, before I will get admitted into a retirement home. In conclusion, I hope that the EU and other parts of the world will move into the direction of clean, comfortable, cross-border train travel, rather than short-haul flights. I hope that we're at the cusp of a train renaissance and that in the future, it'll be possible to quickly and comfortably travel to various parts of the world on a train, rather than a plane. Anyway, thank you so, so much for watching to the end, you're a real legend. If you'd like to support my work, I have a Ko-Fi page with three membership tiers, all of which bring you sweet benefits, like early access to my videos. There are also affiliate links to the equipment I use to make these videos in the description. Any help would be greatly appreciated. I'd also like to take this time to thank Monday's Last Brain Cell and Arrow Martian for supporting the channel with the top membership tier. I can't express how grateful I am for the support. Enjoy the bloopers. This has been Tramley and I'll see you next time. Bye! In this video, I'll try to- Really? <laughs> for example, aviation fuel is stack- Come on. Come on, man, don't be that way. Come on. <laughs> Through tickets co- Bro. Thankfully, part of the year- mm. Speaking English. Ah. <laughs> In conclusion, I hope that the EU and other parts of the world will move into that- Come on, man, bro. Bruh. Bruh. <laughs>